Hello, Math 236 class. Well, um, here we go into our brave new world. Um, welcome to Math 236 Home Edition. You are um, getting this video courtesy of our third floor bedroom slash office and the Roof 103 whiteboard that now lives here. So let's talk a little bit about what is the best way for you to watch these videos. Okay, so before we dive into any math, let's talk about what you should be doing. You should be sitting somewhere in a quiet space without a lot of people running around around you. Um, you should be treating this the same way you would treat a lecture in class. So same rules, you should have your phone away, you should have your notebook paper and pencil or pen out, you should take notes because uh, listening to something doesn't help it stick for you. You really need to be writing things down, okay? So um, you can always pause because that's a beautiful, nice feature of our new technology le lectures. So you might have wanted a pause button on me when I was doing lectures in class. Well, now you've got one so you can stop, pause, write down what you need to think about. Um, we'll be using, so I'll be encouraging you to pause throughout because the sad thing is I can't, I'm still going to ask you questions, but I'm not going to be able to hear your answers. So you uh, want to take some time to stop and think about the answer to a question before just blazing on through a uh, video. And so, um, I won't pause the video myself, but you should do that. I'll try to account for that in the length of videos as far as class time is concerned. So anyway, um, you might wanna have your book out while you're doing this, cause I'll refer to it some since we now have to work on this virtual environment. So if you have the loose leaf version of your book, and you probably want to uh, turn that to chapter 11, section 11.1, .1, which is where we're about to start. And if not, then you might want to have the ebook version up, um, provided that you're not distracted online and um, doing other things other than just, you know, pretending you are in class in RuPaul in room 212 and we are learning calculus together. Okay, that's the goal, that's the deal. I hope you um, embrace that with me and here we go with Math 236 at Home Edition, lecture one. <laughs> okay, so um, there are a lot of ideas in section 11.1. So I think before we start diving into some math and just some time to give you guys a chance to um, let everything that's happened in the last, since we last met, just settle out and try to figure out how this is all going to work moving forward. Let's just talk about what the ideas are in this section. There's going to be several videos associated with section 11.1, .1, okay? So what are the 11.1 .1 ideas? I'm going to have to get used to writing on a whiteboard as well. As we all know, I much prefer chalk. Um, so um, the first idea is the concept of a sequence. So sequences are something that we are going to talk about now for a while. Um, and for us, we're going to mean infinite sequence. We're gonna say the word sequence, but we're gonna mean infinite sequence. So they're gonna mean the same thing to us. Um, and so what are we gonna need, right? We're gonna need a definition, we're gonna need notation, um, and we're, we're gonna need to understand the terms of a sequence, okay? Um, what else are we going to do? We're gonna talk about um, finding the pattern. given terms. We are going to talk about the limit. Woo -woo, you guys are so excited to see limits coming back again, right? Find uh, the limit. Of course, it might not exist. And so we need to know what that means, right? So we're going to need definitions
of what we mean by that limit. Um, and then we are going to um, have more terminology. It continues. Then the term, some of the terminology that we're going to talk about is converge and diverge. Converge or diverge shouldn't sound unfamiliar to you. Where have we last talked about converge and diverge? Good, right? Section, well, we don't really care what section it was. It was improper integrals is the topic, the vocab word. Section 7.8, we've already used that terminology, right? Okay. So um, what else are we going to do once we talk about a definition of a limit, right? Or a definition of when the limit doesn't exist? Well, what do we do after that? We're thinking back to the very first weeks or two of class when I promised you that somewhere later we're going to be using all of these things we're developing again. What is that thing we're going to do? I heard it. Proofs. Yay. Okay. Proofs of limit statements. Um, in addition, what else do we have in section 11.1? .1? Chock full of stuff, right? Um, so we have evaluating limits, so we'll do a lot more with that. We've already been doing evaluation of limits as well. We'll talk about the typical kinds that come up with sequences and what our um, main tools and techniques for that, uh, evaluating those are. What else we're gonna talk about? Some theorems, of course, right? And uh, limit laws that then will help us evaluate limits even more easily. Um, and what else? There'll be some classic sequences that will appear that you'll see later possibly. Um, and a variety that are talked about in your book. Again, we won't have time even with our online, you know, virtual classroom uh, resources to uh, talk about everything. So there are a variety of things in your book that um, now more than ever, it's important for you to be reading as well um, and paying attention to. So let's see, what else? What do we need? We're still not done, right? It's 11.1, we're on number nine. Uh, what are we going to do after that? Well, more terminology, okay? So once we start getting comfortable, then we'll get some new vocab words, right? And um, new definitions, right? New, new vocab words and new definitions. What else then? Once we have more vocab words and more definitions, then what do we get? More theorems. Right? Okay. More theorems and methods that help us um, address the ideas of the sequence. Okay, um, you might be saying, I can't wait till we're done with sequences, but sequences underlie everything there is to know about series, and series is what the rest of chapter 11 is about after 11.1. .1. So let's just buckle in, put on your seatbelt, be ready to go, and just go along for this fun ride. All right, the very last thing um, is uh, we go back to the idea of a sequence again and we talk about a different way um, to define them. Sequences defined as recurrence relations. It's kind of hard to write way down here. Um, and as you all know, I can't quite kneel just yet, although the knee is doing a whole lot better. Um, so maybe I need to get a little stool that I can sit on. Uh, we're all just figuring out what we're going to need as we go through these processes. So sequence is defined as recurrence relations. Um, and that is going to be what we do with section 11.1. .1, okay. So are you ready? Are you ready to just dive in now? Okay. Well, here we go. 
So if you see me uh, move off camera for a minute, that's just because I don't really have a table yet that's nearby. And um, we're going to take a look at a few examples. So um, there are examples in your book. Again, you're going to want to look at those um, examples in your book because I'm not going to repeat those examples since I know you have those there um, in general. So I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. Okay, so uh, let's talk about a sequence. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I want to try to leave that up, which means I need to move it away from the wall in order to turn it so that you don't um, destroy the room. Um, we'll see how this goes. Okay. And now we've got a nice clean slate. And magically, I appear on this side, and we'll try this again with the ideas that we, ooh, I wonder if I missed the, uh, let's, let me get this in the spots though first, hold on. Okay, here's where I wish I could just pause the video, but it is what it is. Okay, so what is a sequence? So essentially, a sequence is an ordered list of numbers, okay? Um, Okay, there is an ordering to the numbers, okay? Um, and for us, um, the list will always have a next number. So it's not finite, it's infinite. Okay, and so um, we can take a look at maybe a homework problem, um, for example, and think about what we might want to do with a sequence. Okay. So we'll spend some time working on various aspects of this particular problem, um, which is in fact not a homework problem. Oh well. Um, so let's look at let's look at eleven point one uh, number nineteen. Okay, and um, from that from that problem, we're gonna we're not actually gonna do number 19 right now we're gonna do we're gonna do lots of different aspects of, of the things that you saw on the other side of this board with this particular problem so um, so first of all how do we how do we um, give a notation for such a thing an ordered list of numbers okay so for number 19 what we have really is a um, sequence which is represented by a sub n with these nice curly braces. Which these guys will represent a sequence, okay? And, um, and what that means, what we'll say is that the a sub n is for number 19, 3n over 1 plus 6n. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that's a shorthand because we don't want to write out, how are we going to write out a list of infinitely many numbers, right? How are we going to write out a list of infinitely many numbers? We don't want to be doing that. We don't want to be writing out a list of infinitely many numbers. And so this notation is saying this is the sequence where each term in the sequence 
is generated by this formula, 3n divided by 1 plus 6n. So what does this really mean, right? In general, a sequence an is represented this way. This is shorthand notation for the set of numbers, right? This is a set of all numbers. Then here is the list, and the list is ordered. a1, a2, a3, a4, on and on and on forever. And that took a lot more blue ink, right, to write out than this did. And that's what this means, okay? Now, um, generally we start counting at n equals 1, okay? Um, so this is also equivalent to this notation where we actually explicitly say start counting at n equals 1 and keep going forever. Okay? Um, if we don't have that subscript there, then it's understood that we'll just start counting at n equals 1. Sometimes it's nice to start counting Where? Good. And n equals zero. Occasionally we do that, okay? The natural numbers versus the whole numbers, yeah? And when we want to start counting at n equals zero, then we'll just say, here's our sequence, we start counting at n equals zero. And that means the very first term has the subscript a sub zero. And then the next term, the second term, has a subscript a sub one. And the third term is the subscript a sub two. And that goes on forever. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. So um, there'll be times later on, you'll see when they come up, where this is actually just makes the formulas a little nicer. And this one um, is what we'll generally use. So if we don't have subscripts, then um, it's understood that we start counting at 1. Okay? So let's go back to this. So here we have... Ooh, whoops, I guess maybe you might not have gotten a chance to write that down. But now that you have a video, you can pop, stop it, right? Go back and write that down if you want. Okay, so here we are. Let's take a look at this uh, sequence and try to just see what's in it, okay? So what does this mean? We have this ordered list of numbers that goes on forever, right? Okay, um, so what would be A1 for our problem? So for this problem, A sub n is 3 times n divided by 1 plus 6n, right? Okay? Okay, and so what does that mean? Well, if I want to know what A1 is, what is A1? That just means I put in a 1, right, where there was an n. So it's just like function notation. Put in a 1 everywhere there was an n. So what do I have? 3 times 1 divided by 1 plus 6 times 1, right? So what is that? 3 divided by 1 plus 6, which is? Good, seven, right? So for this guy, what is our A1? He's three sevens. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, what is A2? A2 is, well, I'm gonna use this formula, right? That's how my ANs are generated, right? So if N is two, what is A sub two? Three times two over one plus six times two. Yes, so what is that? 6 divided by 1 plus 12 is 13. Yeah? So what do we have? Our a sub 2 is 6 thirteenths. Yeah? Okay, what about a sub 3? a sub 3, right? Again, what does that mean? I want to know what number comes out of this expression when n is 3, right? So just like function notation, I put in a 3 everywhere I see an n, right? So what do I get? 
3 times 3 divided by 1 plus 6 times 3. So what do I have? 3 times 3 is 9. 1 plus 6 times 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1. 9 nineteenths. Yes? Okay. Let's do one more. What's a 4? A 4 is 3 times 4 divided by 1 plus 6 times 4, right? 3 times 4 is 12. We don't need calculators, right? 1 plus 6 times 4 is 24. So this is 12 divided by 25. And we certainly don't need decimals, right? Yay. Okay. Um, so here is our sequence. Yeah? It's infinite. It's going to go on forever. Yes? Okay? Um, here is each term. It's a list of numbers that is ordered. Each number has a particular spot it belongs in. Yeah? And um, there we have it. <laughs> so we have... So we wrote out some of the first terms. So these are the first four terms of the sequence generated by this expression, right? Of the sequence given here. So um, we could say then that three n over one plus six n that sequence is equal to that infinite list of numbers, right? So keep that in mind as we move along and you start just working mostly with the expression, remember it's really an infinite list of numbers and think about what those numbers are. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So we've, oh, I'm gonna peek behind my board here and make sure of what I wanted to, to now I've gotta read upside down. So um, definition, notation, and terms, we've talked about that, right? Um, and so now, what did we do, right? We wrote out the terms given a, an expression. But what if we were trying to go the other direction? What if we were given these terms and said, find the pattern for these guys so that I can write it as a simple formula for the nth term, okay? So let's talk about what we mean by that. So here, notice, like we've already called a sub n, like a sub one is the first term, a sub two is the second term, a sub three is the third term, yeah? a sub four is the fourth term. So what is a sub n? The nth term, excellent, right? Very nice. So sometimes what you'll even see, right, um, is that the nth term will be given in the midst of the, of the sequence as well. And so we can say here's a1, right, so this is a1, a2, a3, a4, right, and then we might be like, okay, it goes on like this forever, dot, 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 the nth term is actually 3n divided by 1 plus 6n, dot, and that goes on forever, dot, 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 right? Because the, there's, if there's an n term, then there's an n plus first term, right? Why? Because the list will always have a next number, yeah? Because it's a what? Infinite sequence, not a finite sequence. There will always be a 1 after that, yeah? Make sense? And so this is another way to talk about the sequence where you give the formula for the sequence in the midst, right, of the expression. So again, we have all different types of notation, and we want to make sure that no matter how we see it, we understand what we're talking about, right? This means the entire sequence, the entire list of the infinitely many numbers, right? But um, if I just talk about a sub n is 3n over 1 plus 6n, that's the nth term of the sequence, right? Without the braces, it's the nth term, yes? With the braces, it's the entire list, yes? Okay, all right. Um, let's see, what next? 
So the idea is we started with being given this expression, right? That generated an infinite sequence. But what if we had been given a list of numbers ordered with a dot, 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 and we were asked to figure out what the nth term was, right? Then it might be a little bit harder, right? So, you know, you already know what this one is, so you might think it's not quite so hard. Um, but you know, if I erase that, and you were just given this set of numbers, right? And you're like, what is the an? You would have to come up with some formula, right? Where this guy is associated with n equals one, this guy is associated with n equals two, this guy is associated with n equals three, this guy is associated with n equals four, right? And you'd have to come up with some formula that would work for all of those things. And just staring at it like that, it might not look quite as simple, right? You know, maybe, maybe on top, you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. On top, what I have is multiples of three, right? Three, six, nine, 12. Oh, those are multiples of three, right? And so um, it's, you know, one multiple of three, two multiples of three, three multiples of three, four multiples of three, right? Okay, so that might make you think like, okay, well, the top, right, is three times one, right? And the top over here is three times two, and then the top over here is three times three, and then the top over there is three times four, right? And so then, in general, what you're seeing, if I'm trying to figure out what is a n, right, I might be like, okay, well, a n looks like at least the numerator is three times what? The number in, it is in the sequence, three times n, yeah? And then once I'm there, I might be like, okay, well, wait a minute, now let me look at the bottom numbers, right? How does seven compare to three? Well, two times three plus one is seven. And how does six compare to 13? Well, two times six plus, thir plus one is 13, right? So I might be kind of seeing that, well, this is almost two times three, and that's almost two times six, and that's almost two times nine, right? 19, two times nine is 18, two times 12 is 24, it's almost 24. So that might, that might suggest to me that really what I have going on in, down here is, okay, well, two times um, the number three plus one, right? And then here I would have two times the number six plus one, right? And then here two times, whoops, sorry, that's the, I forgot to put the bottom in, um, two times the number nine plus one, right? denominator there would be two times the number 12 plus one. Yeah? Okay. Um, so what is that? Well, all of these guys have a one. It's one plus, then there's this common guy two, right? One plus two times. Then what is this guy? I should use another color, right? Three is that, six is the numerator, nine is the numerator, 12 is the numerator, right? Ooh, I'm gonna need a new red pen. So that would suggest to me, oh, what goes in here is the numerator, right? <laughs> I'm gonna need a new carpet too. <laughs> um, okay, let's put this red pen away. So what do we have? 3n over 1 plus 6n. That might have been how you could have come, up, come at guessing this as the nth term formula. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, it's certainly easier to go the other way, right? To be given an nth term formula and write out the, some terms than to have some terms and then try to write out the nth term formula. Try, try to 
to try to work out what the nth term formula might be. Okay, so let me erase all of this and maybe we'll try another one of those, working out the formula problems, and then we'll move on. Ooh, the red doesn't erase real well either. It doesn't write real, real well, and it doesn't erase real well. Well, you, my friend, are out. Okay. So, let's look at a problem that is a homework problem. Eleven point one, number seventeen. All right. Um, so let's take a look at this one. What do we have? We've got the sequence, right? So this is what you should say to yourself when you are looking at these problems, because there's going to be things that you do for sequences and similar things that you do for series, but there's gonna be differences. So if you keep saying to yourself in your head, or out loud, right, um, every time you work with one of these problems, the sequence, then maybe what you do with a sequence will settle in more concretely, right? So this is a sequence. So the sequence is given by one half, negative four-thirds, nine-fourths, negative sixteen-fifths, twenty-five-sixths, dot, dot, dot. Goes on forever. Okay? So, Let's think about this guy. This is what we're given. What do we know? We're, we know that this guy is associated with n equals one, and this guy is associated with n equals two, and this one is associated with n equals three, and this one is associated with n equals four, and this one is associated with n equals five. All right? Okay. So we start to look, what looked easier, the numerators or the denominators, would you say? Good. The denominators look a little bit easier to relate to this number, right? So our goal is, what is the nth term? also known as a sub n, right? The nth term of this sequence, right? Okay, so what do I see here, right? What I see in the denominator is that when n is one, this denominator is two. When n is two, this denominator is three. When n is three, this denominator is four, right? So what is one way I could write, um, Maybe I'll just try to squeeze it in right here. Another way to think about this sequence, another way to write two is one plus one, right? We're just doing the denominators right now. So minus negative four is my numerator, and what do I got in the denominator? Well, I've got three, but I want to relate that to two, right? So three is two plus one, yes? When n is 3, what do I have in the denominator? My denominator is 4, but I want to write that as 3 plus 1. So I'm beginning to see numerator is negative 16, denominator, you tell me, 4 plus 1. Good. Last one, you get bored with this now, you're like, get, get on with it, will you? Um, what's the denominator? Five plus one. Good. Okay. Now, what 
these are green, right? This one, you might not be sure what number to circle there in the denominator, but here, n is 2, there's my n. n is 3, there's my n. n is 4, there's my n. n is 5, there's my n. So n is 1, there's my n, right? Does that make sense? So if we're going to guess a um, idea for the nth term a sub n, it's going to be, whoops, a sub n. What are we going to have right here? The denominator is going to be good, n plus 1. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay? Very nice. Now what? Now you've got to think about the numerator. Okay. Well, for a moment, let's ignore the sign change. So the sign change seems to be something that's a little bit problematic for us to start out. So let's ignore that sign change right now. Um, and what would we have if we just ignored the sign change? So if we think about, right, the numerators, right? numerators, ignoring the sign, S-I-G-N, right, not S-I-N-E, right, okay, numerators ignoring the sign are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, yeah, right, well, how can you write 1, what is the relationship between 1 and 1 that's similar for the relationship between 4 and 2, that's similar for the relationship between 9 and 3, that's similar for the relationship between 16 and 4. You got this now, right? What can I do with each, each one of these numbers to get these numbers? Good. I square each one of these guys to get that number, yes? So what does that say we ought to have in the numerator, right? Um, in the numerator, the numerator is just the number n squared. We're super close. Now we have to deal with the sign change. Okay. So, anytime you see this is called an alternating sequence, the, the, the sequence alternates sign, the terms in the sequence alternate sign from positive to negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. That pattern will continue forever. So, um, it doesn't matter whether it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, negative, positive, right? How do we alternate sign? There's lots of ways to alternate sign. Okay? There's lots of ways to alternate sign. Um, but the classic, simplest ways of, of alternating sign are when you take what number alternating a sign without changing, with, without creating, with just creating a plus one or a minus one. That's really what we have right here. It's like plus one times this, minus one times that, plus one times this, minus one times that, right? So what can I do? I can look at negative one, right? Raised to um, the nth power. So if I think about that sequence, right? If I just think about that plain old sequence, negative 1 to the nth power, then when n is 1, what is this? Minus 1 to the 1 is minus 1. Good. So when n is 2, what, what is the second term in that sequence? Minus 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. Good. When, so this is n is 1. This is n is 2. Right, when n is 3, what am I going to get? Negative 1 cubed. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. When n is 4, what am I going to get? Negative 1 to the 4th. Negative 1 to the 4th is 1. Right? So what does this sequence do? It just alternates sign between negative 1 and 1. Okay? What else? Could I do? I could do negative 1, the sequence negative 1 to the n plus 1. If I do negative 1 to the n plus 1, whoops, can you guys see that? 
okay? Then what's the n equals 1 term? What's the n equals 1 term? Negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, so that's negative 1 squared. Good. 1, positive 1, right? What's the n equals 2 term? Negative 1 to the 2 plus 1, negative 1 cubed, right? Negative 1. The n equals 3 term will be, the one that is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 is even, a negative to an even power, right? Positive, so since it's 1, it just stays 1, yes? And then what will be the next guy? Negative 1, right? Because when n is 4, n plus 1 is 5, 5 is odd, negative 1 to the fifth, that's negative 1, right? So that's also the same as if we did, well, maybe I won't go there just yet. All right, so let's, <laughs> let's take a look at these two alternating sign sequences. And I want to take one of them and multiply it by my a sub n one of these terms, which one is it? Is it this one or is it that one? This one or that one? Good. It's that one, right? Why? Because my first term is positive here and my second term is negative, right? Yeah? Are we good? And so I want to say, so this is why I left a little bit of space in here. Um, I don't have to stick it up there in the numerator. We all understand how fractions work. We can stick it out here. Minus 1 to the n plus 1. Can you see that? Do I need to make that bigger? Um, hold on. Minus 1 to the n plus I don't think I did make it bigger. But anyway, here we are. Minus 1 to the n plus 1, n squared over n plus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So this would be our general formula for this uh, sequence. Well, I don't think I can write it all in here. Didn't leave myself enough space. Minus 1 to the n plus 1 n squared over n plus 1. There it is. Yeah? Now, what was I going to mention before? There's other ways. Okay, there's definitely other ways to think about this as well. So let's look at this problem. Um, what if I would have done minus 1 to the n minus 1? Would I have gotten the exact same sequence? I wrote it there as equal, so like, hopefully it, it is. Let's see. If n is 1, then n minus 1 would be 0. Minus 1 to the 0 power is 1, right? Anything to the 0 power is 1. If n is 2, minus 1 to the 2 minus 1 to the 1 power is negative 1, right? Minus 1 to, if n is 3, then 3 minus 1 is 2, that's even, negative 1 squared is 1, right? So this isn't unique how you can write this. You can write it in a lot of different ways, okay? Um, so we could have wrote this one as negative 1 to the n minus 1, and it would also be correct, right? So you'll have to, you know, um, take a look. If you check your answers with something and it doesn't quite match up, you'll have to be savvy enough to make sure that you understand when something that's a little bit different is actually the same. Does that make sense? Okay. Looking good. Let's look at another one. Let's see. What if I give you this sequence? Let's just stick with this guy right here. What would that one be? Well, let's see. When n is 1, this is 2 times 1, negative 1 squared, 1. When n is 2, 2 
2 times 2, 4, negative 1 to the 4th, 1. 1 minus 3, 2 times 3, negative 1 cubed to the 6th, right? 2 times 3 is 6. Even, 1. Yeah? This guy is the sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Yes? Make sense? Okay. Um, we kind of knew that was going to happen because what do we know about 2 times anything? That's an even number always, right? 2 times n is even, and therefore this exponent is always even, and it doesn't matter whether this guy's negative 1 squared, um, negative 1 or 1, it's all, we're always going to get that. What if I did this? What can you tell me about that exponent? Good, that exponent is odd, right? An even number plus one is always odd, right? Okay, and so what can this, what can you tell me about negative one to any odd power? Very nice, it's always negative one. And so there's that sequence, okay? Well, what about this? Negative 1 to the 2n minus 1. What can you tell me about that? 2n is even. If I subtract 1 from an even number, what kind of number am I going to get? Nice. Also odd. So this guy is another way of saying this exact same thing, right? So I bring these up now because later they're going to be coming up a lot in chapter 11. Um, and so I just wanted them to at least be on your radar, these kinds of ideas here. Okay? So let's now think about what else we want to talk about. What does it mean to talk about the limit of a function, of a sequence, whoops, of a sequence. So let's see, what, if I asked you, does this sequence seem to have a limit, what might you guess? Not even knowing what the definition means at this stage. You might say, yeah, right? You might say, yeah, this limit is one, good. And for this one, I, you might say, does this guy have a limit? And you might say, yeah, the limit for this one is negative one. Yeah? And for these guys down here, if I asked you, is there a limit? Well, your instinct, hopefully, based on what you know about functions and limits, is that no, it does not have a limit. Why? Because it bounces around between two different values, never settling in to any one, right? So this brings us to the idea, even for these very simple guys, that we could visualize these, right? If I wanted to visualize this sequence, then I could draw a Cartesian coordinate system, and this would be my n axis, and then this would be my a sub n, right? So when n is 1, then a sub n is 1, and I just get a dot there. And when n is 2, a sub n is 2, right? And when n is 3, a sub n is 3. There's one, sorry. <laughs> one, 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 and one. They're all ones. A1 is one, A2 is one, A3 is one. Okay, back to this. A4 is, there you have it, one, right? It's just a bunch of dots, right? And the dots are all at one. Yeah, does that make sense? No matter how far out we go, we'll always be at one. And what about this guy? I can draw a coordinate system. And now, it's, I mean, it's a little bit different than what we were doing with an x, right, and an f of x, because we usually think of f, x and f of 
f of x is continuous, right? And we have a continuous variable, real number system. But now we don't. We have the natural numbers. So we just have a bunch of dots as these guys. And so what would I get this time? I would just get when n is 1, I would get negative 1. When n is 2, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 4. Let me wrote that too big, negative 1. I would just get a bunch of dots. 5, right? OK? But these guys down here, they would do what? If I look at this one in particular, visually, here's a n and there's n, right? When n is 1, what do I get? 1. When n is 2, what do I get? Negative 1. When n is 3, what do I get? 1. When n is 4, what do I get? Negative 1. And that pattern just continues forever. Never settling in on any one number, right? So for these guys, the limits don't exist. So for this one, the limit is 1. For this one, the limit is negative 1. And for these guys down here, whoops, these two guys, right? Uh, the limits don't exist. Why? Because we bounce between two different numbers. So that tells us we need a real definition of limit. And I think I should probably end this video now before we dive into that definition of limit.